So on the morning of D-Day, some fairly significant actions occurred as a result of pure fluke. And the death of a German general was one of these. So I'm now between Picaville and Etienneville uh, in the 82nd area of the Continent Peninsula and very close to Chateau Berneville, which was the headquarters of the 91st Luftland Division. They were the division responsible for the defence of the Continent Peninsula and they had specialised in anti-airborne warfare, so repelling of an airborne invasion. And a certain Lieutenant Malcolm Brannan from Headquarters Company, 3rd Battalion, 508th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 82nd Airborne Division, landed nearby in this location. And as he was gathering uh, himself after the jump, he linked up with uh, another Lieutenant and some other enlisted men from, from his division. As they made their way through the lanes, they came upon this farmhouse here just along this quiet country track. And wanting to know where they were, they knocked on the door and the French family that lived there couldn't believe their eyes. The father who lived in the property told them that they were between Picaville and Etienneville and that made Lieutenant Brannan breathe a sigh of relief because he knew at that point that they were able to determine their next course of action to get back to their own troops. Also, the kids that lived there, they were also very surprised to see, uh, finally see American uniforms. Now, just as this was going on, all of a sudden they heard a vehicle coming and the men who were in this area got, uh, got into a defensive position and Brannon stepped out into the middle of the road and tried to halt the vehicle. The vehicle only sped up, it didn't stop, at which point Brannon's men opened fire and destroyed the uh, vehicle's forward movement. The vehicle crashed into this wall here. The driver was killed. One of the other enlisted men in the car, uh, Gefreiter Baumann, was, uh, I think, thrown clear and tried to make his way into that ditch. And Brannon, on the, uh, he realized as soon from his position where he tried to stop the vehicle that he was in danger of being shot by his own side. So he climbed up onto this bank here and was able to watch this unfold. So as Brannon was stood on the embankment, the, one of the occupants um, got out of the vehicle and he was crawling toward the Luger that had been thrown clear from the vehicle. Now, during this, he was shoot, uh, shouting, don't kill, don't kill in both English and German, but Brannon, quick thinking, and knowing that he's, he wasn't a killer, but he was determined that that German wasn't gonna get hold of that pistol because it could either be the difference between uh, Brannon himself or one of his men. So he put a round through the individual's head and uh, he didn't go any further. After the action, um, they searched all the documents. They made Gefreiter Baumann carry a couple of briefcases full of important documents that would then be taken back and used um, and used by the S2 intelligence section. But whilst he was here, Brannon had the thought of mind, the presence of mind to check the occupant and try and work out if there was any identifying marks or names, unit um, designations. And all he could find in the individual's hat was the name Fally. It later transpired that that was the hat and the body of General Leutnant Wilhelm Valley from the 91st Luftland Division. So through pure coincidence and pure luck, the 82nd Airborne had cut the head off of the 91st Luftland Division on the morning of D-Day before it had any opportunity to really start to bring itself to bear as a cohesive fighting unit against 
the 101st and the 82nd Airborne Divisions on the Contending Peninsula. The property now um, is now in the process of being restored, which is good to see as it's been dormant for years. Um, but this little part of Normandy is well worth a visit if you get the opportunity to, just because of some of the monumental stuff that happened here. So if you've enjoyed this short episode about um, Malcolm Brannan and uh, Wilhelm Falley, then please tap that like bell for more content. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to World War II Wayfinder. It's all really appreciated. Okay, cheers everybody. See you in the next one.